Commissar Bro here to talk about all the things that you love. No, just kidding. I'm actually sitting here trying to figure out what game I want to play. Unfortunately, I've been going through the list for about 15 minutes and frankly, I can't find shit! You ever had that problem when you are just going down your list of Steam games and you can't figure out which fucking one you want to play? Well, I have that problem all the time. It's, uh, kind of frustrating. Yeah, if you know what I mean. <sighs> Doing this list again. Played this, played that, played this and that. <sighs> Already did a video of that. Eh, these games blow. I don't feel like installing that shit. Nah, I don't feel like playing that either. Fuck, man. Oh, this is ridiculous. I have a whole fucking list. Oh, God, definitely don't feel like playing that game again. Jesus Christ, all these games? Oh, God, yeah, I've I got to come back to that. Ugh. Gee, I, I, go, I have a whole list of games. And Jesus, man, i got nothing to play. This is ridiculous. Oh, oh. Oh, Mountain Blade. Fuck yeah. I love this game. This game kicks ass. Let's play this shit. Fuck yeah. <sighs> Mountain Blade. You sweet, dirty bitch, you. Featuring some of the best battles I've ever experienced in any game ever. This game, while not the prettiest, has some of the best gameplay money can buy. Not to mention for a relatively cheap price, with a minimal amount of DLC, and much more mod support than your grubby hands can hold. Ah, the good times. I remember riding my courser all over the hilly steps. Snowy plains, Nord infested coast. Ah, nostalgia. Before I go any further though, I think it might be important to establish the beginnings of this humble game before I go too much further into the details and the workings of the game itself. Our story begins with an incredibly humble beginnings, where a yet unnamed game began its digital life as a project between a husband and wife. The aspirations and ambition of this power duo led them to found what we now know as Tale Worlds. This game went through an incredibly extensive beta testing period, which I am proud to say I was given the privilege of participating in, and would eventually be picked up by Grand Strategy Powerhouse Paradox Interactive. In the blossoming of its adulthood, Mountain Blade took out its pacifier, rubbed it in the face of AAA titles everywhere, and said, Fuck you. I can do things you can do, but I can do it better. The only problem was Mountain Blade grew up to be quite an ugly lad. However, Mountain Blade turned out to have a great personality under all that nasty ugly and would become a huge success, being praised for its totally badass game mechanics and also its innovation in a genre that not many dared to go. The finished product? One of the most badass games I own. The whole gist of the game is, depending on your relatively irrelevant starter story, that you're some random punk who decides to say fuck the world and proceed to join together a band of other misfit fuck-ups and depending on your playstyle, choose to either help one of the reigning kings unite Calradia or crush all others and rule it for yourself for the cost of being perceived as some two-bit upstart by the already established monarchies. With that said, you pull either one of these objectives off by literally taking your warband and looting, pillaging, and otherwise causing all sorts of havoc to those who oppose you. Along the way, you meet special characters who all seem to have the same backstory of I screwed up my life, now I travel around and get wasted in taverns, spare a few coins so I can unfuck myself, and can use their special abilities to further your goals. Speaking of abilities, the game has a level up system, sort of like, oh, I don't know, every RPG you've ever played, so it's, you know, you're going to be used to it. And it also features a rather healthy list of skills and traits for your character. The best part is there are two separate skill systems. Traits that your character can only increase once he has sufficiently murdered enough peasants, and proficiency, which, as it sounds, is how good you are at killing said peasants with certain weapons. Other things featured in Mountain Blade, an incredibly simplistic yet detailed politic diplomacy system where every person in the game, from the vagrants you pick up along the way to the isolated villages and kings of Calradia, each have an opinion. That opinion, coupled with your renown as warrior and lord, affect your standings in the realm. Essentially, if you're a dick and you attack caravans on the road or loot innocent villages, they won't forget your atrocities, and not only can it affect your relationship with a certain kingdom, but it can also cause able-bodied recruits to deny you to their valuable troop pools. So, 
being a lord for hire without any vassalage to a realm may leave you stranded in a sea of enemies, but that just adds to the sweet tenderness of world domination when you finally do succeed. And since I'm on the topic of features, it's also probably important to mention troop management and equipment of your companions in your brutal lordship himself. Troop management is quite simple, really. You start with recruits who you gather from surrounding villages, either associated with your kingdom or not, and as you drag them through dozens of battles, and for each one they survive, they eventually gain experience, and they attain the honor of leveling up to stronger and stronger soldiers. For example, the tree for a Swadian melee soldier is as straightforward as recruit, and then a militia, and then a footman, and then a man-at-arms, and then a knight. And with Swadian Knights being the strongest shot cavalry in the game. With that said, equipment is also a major part of the game because a knight without plate mail is just as pathetic as a group of villagers and presents a rather minimal challenge. Now, you don't necessarily control the individual equipment of your troops, but you do control the equipment of your companions and yourself. And let me tell you, this game has a shit ton of stuff to use. I mean, just the different types of weapons alone is just completely ridiculous. You've got one-handed swords, bastard swords, zweihanders, great swords, broadswords, falchion, knives, charids, hatchets, double-bladed axes, one-handed axes, severed types of arrows, scimitars, morning stars, throwing daggers, pitchforks, glaives, halberds, spears, pikes, javelins, bows, crossbows, lances, throwing axes, throwing knives, darts, rocks, picks, dicks, shit! There's so many different weapons in this game, it is absolutely ridiculous. And you know what? There's more than the ones I just mentioned. Aside from the stuff I've already mentioned that is in the games, you know, like the diplomacy system, the politics system, so on and so forth, you've also got the ability to control huge swaths of land in villages and cities. In those particular cities, you tax the peasants who live there, and you can actually make a living in the game off those cities. Now, generally to get those cities, you have to do it with Mountain Blade. You've actually got to kill people and take the city, and then you become the new leader of that particular city. You make more money if you actually create your own kingdom, but it's really, really hard to just go out trying with your own kingdom, and it's more of a late game feature. Like, after you've already kicked the ass of every kingdom in Colorado, then you just decide, hey, fuck it, let me just be my own king. Features like that. I mean, you even have the ability to get married in the game. That alone is just pretty badass. I mean, what is this? It's like the fucking medieval version of The Sims. The Sims medieval does not count. With that said, let's take a look at more of some of the actual action elements of the game. Like, the actual meat of the game, which would be the battles. Let's watch. And this right here is what it's all about. Huge ass battles with hundreds of soldiers duking it out and only the best army wins. You ride ahead of your brothers in arms and draw the iron of blade and blood and raise it towards the skies above to rally those lucky few to victory against those who threatened your stake in the world. And you deliver your response to the cruel invitation of such a liberating dance by causing a forced abandonment of this world of your enemy's souls with a death blow to one's head. Or by less poetic means, you kill all those bastards. And on a less aggressive note, I just love everything about the fighting. It's gritty, it's satisfying, I mean, it, there's just a feeling you get when you have a javelin and you toss that bad boy and it smacks your enemy right upside the face. The fucking gore, the battles, the slicing, the dicing, everything about it is just exhilarating. And I love it. But you know what else I remember about this particular game? It's fucking brutal! Well, that's not necessarily true. If you turn the difficulty down, the game is incredibly manageable and fun. But if you are a thrill seeker who enjoys the challenge that gaming provides, then I dare, I freaking dare you, to download a battle sizer mod, jump the number of soldiers on the field to about 500, make sure to turn all the damage amplifiers up, and watch the fucking fireworks. I bet you'll lose count of how many times some asshole of a lord decided to drag you around Calradia like some rich girl's bitch dog. And well, since I'm talking about things that make me rage about this game, I think it's safe to go ahead and talk about the shit that makes me mad. 
Well, for one, there are times when you can be killed by an arrow or a bolt from a ranged weapon and the shot can be stray, yet if it hits you in that one lucky fucking spot, then you're dead. Oh, it's, it's frustrating, yet it makes sense. But come on, it's a video game, does it have to make sense? You also have the graphical constraints of the game, which they're not that big of a deal to me, but it still kind of is an issue. You know, with Warband, it improved significantly, but in the original Mountain Blade, it was pretty fucking terrible. However, modders have since taken care of the visual void that was initially existing at the time. Let it also be said, I probably have the most unpopular opinion regarding Mountain Blade ever, in the sense that I think the multiplayer blows. <laughs> Yep, that's right. I don't like it. Can't stand it. It's lame, it's boring, it's particularly uninteresting, and worst of all, I believe it takes away from how goddamn amazing the single player portion is. Now I know there are a number of mods that exist which base their existence purely on the machinations of the multiplayer portion, but I've yet to find the excitement that I quite enjoy when, in single player, by murdering mindless drones of Rodox, Swadians, Vagirs, Kurgids, Serenids, and Nords. But again, that is just my opinion. Well, like I said, I mean, that's Mountain Blade. It's probably one of the best games I've ever played, and honestly, it's one of my favorites. I've spent more time than I would like to admit on this particular game, and, um, the hell's all that static? So we meet again, Kamsa, bro. Tintin? Is that, is that you? This is Tintin, and we've been listening to your praise of him. Mountain Blade. We Britrons have to question, how can you be well, so lenient uh, on the faults of this game, I mean, yet so heavily berate and mock us? I, uh, uh, hey, if you remember correctly, did I not say, at the very end of the video, I said I would actually go ahead and I would do another review of it once the game came out? It is far too late for that, Commissar. Too late? The Britrons have already wait, decided wait. what your punishment shall be. <sighs> Goodbye, Commissar, bro. Well, that was weird. Oh shit, is that a timer? Oh fuck!